Let's stay with the developments in the Eastern Cape. Fundile Kade is the province's education MEC and joins us live now. Thank you so much for your time. Let's just start with, um, you know, how things went for the academic year as uh, you started the school year 2024. Yes, thanks, Bongi, and thanks for the listeners. We have been able to plan accordingly, uh, precisely because we are a growing system. Um, we have hit 1.7 million learners now in the province, which then demands a bit of a clear view on how the first week must be um, engaged in terms of ensuring that learners don't miss any opportunity of learning. We have been able to make sure that the learner support material is delivered on the 30th of November for the first time in the province. Is it all the schools? To all schools. Okay. Uh, we have made sure that textbooks are delivered on the 28th of November, again for the first time in the province. And uh, we have made sure that also the crisis we were uh, anticipating of scholar transport from the Department of Transport. Uh, the cabinet said first week of December and gave them a leverage of uh, 177 million rands uh, for them to be able to carry for the bills that they have so that we can adjust um, their operations. So systems goes well. So the, the problems with the scholar transports are now resolved. All the learners who are using that mo the form of transportation are covered. No, no, are covered. Are covered because we are transporting 103, mm -hmm. 103,000 learners. Okay. Uh, so they are covered uh, from a financial point of view, which was a problem uh, from, from the cabinet point of view. We also saw, though, some concerns around overcrowding as you talk about this expansion. But at the same time, uh, there have been infrastructure problems, uh, you know, coupled with what we've seen in the past, but also um, some of the flooding that the province has experienced. Did you have any problems in that regard? We have handed over uh, 46 new schools uh, last year in the province. We have built and completed them. We are currently going to hand over 26 schools from, from February, 1st of February to June. And uh, that gives you a bit of a breathing space uh, to ensure that there are at least there space for, for the learners to learn. But uh, also we are restructuring um, the schooling system in the province uh, so that you eliminate uh, the phenomenon of unviable small schools because they are not productive enough uh, for you to get the quality of the throughput that you want. So in terms of the planning, uh, the performance systems and also the view from a strategy of the province uh, is getting nearer to, to the objectives that we have set for us. It's one thing to build new schools, but it's another to see reports that are telling us that over 420 um, you know, schools have pit latrines in the province and only 21 have had this removed. These are health hazards. Why are we still talking about pit latrines and pit toilets in 2024? In terms of the report of 2019, uh, the DPE gave us a research report of 1,500 uh, schools that uh, have got pit latins. Today's date, we have dealt with 1,147 of them. Um, the 228 of them is under construction as we speak. Uh, so in terms of the plans from the department's point of view, in a space of eight months to come, that will be history in the province. Wait, history as in all the pit toilets will be eradicated or history of these 220 odd? Yes. So how many? Are we eradicating all pit latrines well, in the province? or We are eradicating doing? all of them because there were 1,500 in, mm -hmm. in all in terms of that report. So eight months. In eight months in there eight will be months, no pit toilets yes, in the province. Because industry. we have already appointed the implementing agency and also contractors are on the space. So what are the safety mechanisms though that are being put around those pit latrines right now? Because we've seen children fall into them and actually uh, losing their lives. In the most of those that I have already started, there are, there are hired um, toilets uh, from the service providers precisely because of the, pre precisely because of the health hazard that we're talking about. But that's a temporal measure. Our strategy is to eradicate it and put it into, 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 into the history. Because remember, it's not just about access to education, but also the dignity that it has 
to the learners and also the community of the Eastern Cape in general. Mm. And a colleague of mine, Gulula Gonyembe, is here, has been doing a series of reports that are looking at either schooling or poverty in the Eastern Cape. And that is one thing that some of your learners are battling with, that's poverty. And in some of these instances, they're not even able to go to school because they either have to look after the, the, you know, their siblings or they have to look after their families. And that is a concern because we're seeing children also missing from the schooling system. I wonder what is the strategy in that regard? As, as a province, we have taken a decision, and um, general as government, because you'll remember that 70% uh, of the population of the province, from a schooling point of view, is coming from Quindal 1 to 3, mm. which means those are indigent families. So we have taken a decision that we must not uh, fail them in terms of the school funding norms. That 1,600 uh, rents for each and every learner as a subsidy to their own uh, no fee school must be done. And we have done that last year. And uh, we, when we have got some constraints in terms of the reduction of the fiscals, we opted to take some uh, money from the budget votes of infrastructure so that you don't fail in terms of the functioning of the schooling mm. uh, at that particular level. So that's, that's one. But also, we have introduced the second meal now in terms of the school nutrition program so that they can have the breakfast and the lunch at the same time so that you mitigate the crisis of the indigent families because there is no guarantee that this kid might have got food before he comes here. So as, as, as government, there are such kind of plans that goes beyond, uh, goes beyond the sector. But what are the plans then to reach them, to make sure that they actually do come to your schools to then be able to have these meals? Because we're seeing them falling through the cracks, that some of the officials are not even locating them, are not even going to the homes where they are. For example, Unkululego, um, you know, did a whole series of some young people who even say that they're not even getting the assistance that they are asking for. Therefore, they have to look after their sick parents and not be able to go to school so it's one thing to put measures in place at the school yes. but what is being done to reach them at home and take them to school we, we have appointed a, 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 a what you call a commission um, a research company to, to track because our, 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 our view was that if you look for uh, the enrollment of learners from the entry point. Mm. There must be a bit of a synergy in the system yeah. because this is a 12-year journey. So once you talk to 2 million in grade 1 and you talk 900,000 in grade 12, that on its own is a crisis. Yeah. But our, our attitude was that even if that happens, how do you then deal with the economic development strategy of the province? So that if migration patterns forces you to bring back people in the province and sustain the development of the province, both at, at, a, at a schooling level and also outside of the school, so that, that, that interlink becomes a, a critical question for us. We have done that. But also the Premier has launched a number of projects mm. just to, to ensure that there is a massive uh, investment in the province and as such the province is a construction site if anywhere you go now you could see uh, the level of the infrastructure that is being built whether you talk roads whether you talk bridges whether you talk schools whether you talk clinics so we have just turned around uh, the, the outlook of the province as, as a provincial government. So talking about the Premier, we saw him a few days ago. He's targeting 80% when it comes to the matric results for the province. He says that he's looking to see if the province will be able to secure an 80%. This is, of course, uh, over just over 77% we saw in the previous uh, results. Are you hopeful that you'll be able to meet the target? No, we, we, have, been, we have been always... Uh, targeting 5% ever since we joined the office in 2019. And if you look in terms of the strategy and also the track record, mm. we have been able to get that 5% improvement every year. And you are rated as one of the best improving system in the country. And I can assure you, even tomorrow, that is expected to happen. It's so not you're ready? Yes. You, you will no, we are target. going to get that 80%. That one I can, I can, I can give you. What I'm not sure is 
what percentage beyond 80%. But 80% is, 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 no, is, no, is not a debate. Okay. And, and as you say, it's not a debate. But one thing then, you know, you mentioned that is quite critical. Are this, you know, if they start at 2 million in grade one, they should at least, um, you know, be able to track them throughout the schooling system. The system should be able to track them right up until matric. But we're seeing even at national, this is a challenge. We're seeing some of them start, probably you start at 2 million in grade one. But then when you get to grade 12, we're seeing probably 800 or so thousand. I'm just using figures here. But how do you then put a strategy as the department to track them from grade one to grade 12 so that we don't keep talking about this problem each and every single time we listen to the technical reports of these kids that are falling through the cracks? The sector has, um, the minister has put a sector plan in um, uh, the 2030. And uh, in that sector plan, we have been able to deal decisively with the learner retention strategy mm -hmm. precisely because of this question because our view is that even if you even if they continue to be part of the system there must be a scientific relationship between what is taught in the classroom and the crisis outside there there must be a a relationship between the skills uh, production and supply from basic education and resolving the problem of somebody that is in a crisis outside economically. So that strategy talks to that. But again, um, we are reducing the numbers of the unemployed, uh, unemployed youth by diversifying the curriculum itself. Um, we have introduced a vocational skills uh, stream now uh, as a country uh, massively. So that you answer the question um, that is prevalent outside there. Yeah. Why dominantly in the tourism sector are foreigners? Is, is, is it because of the system of education or not? So I'm then saying this introduction of vocational skills is a bit a helpful one and assistance one so that you are able to balance up uh, the, the, the demand and supply. Uh, that is needed outside there. All right, MEC, thank you for stopping by. And let's see if you get your target of 5%. We will call you when those results are no, announced to see if uh, indeed you do reach your targets. But thank you so much. Thank do you appreciate so much. your time this evening. That's uh, Fundile Kate, Eastern Cape Education MEC.